Good morning, chickadees. I am so excited to show you one of my favorite types of art today called Alabrijas. Less like this one in my hand. Woohoo! You're probably wondering, what are Alabrijas? Let's get Frida to help us out. Alabrijas are brightly colored sculptures of fantastical creatures. Originated here in Mexico, specifically Oaxaca, right here. In the 1930s, there was an artist named Pedro Linares who had a dream about some fantastical creatures. Things he dreamed about were things with donkeys with butterfly wings and roosters with bullhorns. That's why you have me, your art teacher. Okay, so are you ready? What you're gonna do is get yourself a nice piece of paper, a pencil, some sharpies, something to color with, things that you think you want to start with, and it helps to have pictures of animal silhouettes. Because what I do is look at pictures before I even get started. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is find animals that I like. So up there in the picture you can actually see the donkey. And I'm gonna start with a donkey. I don't know if I'll end up also making it a donkey or a horse, but that's where I like to start. I like to give myself something that you know I like and go with it. Always remember, go with things that you like rather than things that you think other people would like because that's gonna be the best stuff that you create. So I started there, and then now I'm changing the tail a little bit into it looks more like a fox tail. So I started with a donkey tail, got a fox tail, and I just kind of let it go, just like, um, you know, originally Pedro Linares made these creatures for imagination. You're making it from your imagination. We're doing it in a style that similar, but we're also developing it. So I'm taking my first, and now I have like two animals because I have the donkey and I have the fox. And then I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do for the head. I haven't totally decided. Um, I just kind of let my mind wander as I go and my pencil kind of wander and, and see what fits. And it's always okay to change things as you work. I definitely change a lot of the things as I go and I stop and I think and I say, okay, all right, so I'm going to do a dog head on my, or it could be a wolf head, even though most of the time when I try to draw uh, wolves, they always want to be dogs. So we're going to let this kind of just become a dog head on this donkey horse body with a fox tail. And I'm just playing with it. I get it, the drawing until I, I like it. And then I would do the next step. So I'm going to work through. I'm going to put in a suggestion of an eye. I'm going to always go. feel free to go back and play with what I'm making because it's part of the process is just playing, seeing what fits, what feels good. It's one of the funny things that you can't really teach because it's all about that feeling. So now I'm just about finishing up with my drawing. I may go back and play with it a little bit more. And I'm almost done with my pencil, getting finished. You know, I think about the details, things I want to do next. But I'm going to hit it now with a Sharpie. I'm going to go over all of my lines. And this is um, so that everything you do stands out. It's also if you want to go over this at the end with a little bit of paint, you could do it with paint. And it won't interfere with the lines underneath. So it's kind of like a security blanket Sharpie <laughs> in this case, where you're just kind of going over your stuff um, and bringing it out a little bit more than just the pencil drawing. I love pencils and I love drawing with pencils, but having that Sharpie there does make it look more finished in this particular case. So um, don't be scared of the Sharpie. Um, it's, it's your friend. <laughs> so uh, what you really want to do is now think about how you're going to approach the next part of this. So what I'm going to do is break it into five different sections. And I'm doing that so later on I can put pat different patterns in each one of those sections. Now I kind of have a way that I want to do it. Oh, here I did five. So you do four lines and you get five, which is how that works. Um, and then I would also recommend going around the outside and doubling up on some of those lines. And also I'll tell you, I mess up. So I mess up generally on, on those outside lines. So if you double up, it'll look good. Now I have my five sections. And what I'm going to do with them are put patterns into each one. Um, so each one is going to have different patterns. But before then, I'm going to do a few little details like the nose here. And the eye is pretty awesome. They're pretty simple. Remember, keep simple. I'm going to put like a superhero mask around the eye. <laughs> and a little eyeball inside the eye. That's always good. People, people, animals, creatures, alabrijas need uh, need eyeballs, and that's pretty much it with that part. 
So uh, what I'm going to do now are the patterns. So I'm going to go in with simple things like swirls. You can always look around the world around you. Everybody likes different types of patterns. On this one I'm going to go very simple and swirlies and stars and a few other things. And I'll fast forward it so you don't actually have to watch me make all of those patterns because it's not as thrilling as many other things you could do with your time. Um, and remember you can always pause the video as you're working so that um, you're, you know, up to where I am on here. Remember, here we go. Okay, so I've gone over everything now. I put in my five patterns. I went over the outside lines. And then all I want to do now is just really clean up what I have so that it, you know, looks good. So you're going to take an eraser. You're going to just clean up your lines, make it look pretty. It's not really, um, it's a, you know, one of the more finishing steps. It's also so it's not competing with the stuff all inside um, when you actually do the final stuff on top of there. So it's just a little extra, extra step. I would do it now rather than at the very end because sometimes you put a crayon or something on top and it really doesn't want to let it go and you're stuck with those lines underneath and, and it, it may bother you. <laughs> it might not. So that's really, you know, that's how that goes. <laughs> And I'm still erasing. <laughs> this is a very thrilling part of this drawing process. So um, I'm actually, as I go, I often think about what I want to do next uh, when I'm doing the parts where it's kind of mindless. I think about, well, how am I going to approach this? How am I going to hit this with color? And what's going to make me happy? Now, you can do this with a lot of different techniques. You could go straight to your colored pencils. You could um, go straight to crayon. Um, I played a little bit with the uh, paint today, so I'm going to continue on with the paint because I really like it. And also I can do like a double process where I can paint first and then put the colored pencils or crayons on top depending on my mood. So I'm getting ready. I have my brush uh, and I'm thinking about my color schemes. Uh, I do a lot of warm colors into these and I'm going to use a brush. This one's called a flat, the one I just showed on camera, because it's flat. <laughs> it's not rounded. And that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to grab some paint. It works with any paint. Um, again, if you're using thicker paper, it's a little bit better for when you're painting on it. And then what you're going to do is start putting stuff down. Um, I'm going to let these guys bleed into each other a little bit. So that's uh, just something fun you can do with your paint. If you are using colored pencils for underneath, just, you know, let yourself go into it. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to let myself go as I work. And then I'm going to really have to let this dry before I do anything else on top of here. So, yeah. So I let this dry. <laughs> you didn't see that, but that was some time that passed. And now I have my crayons that I'm going to work with. It's mostly dry. You can see the tail is still a little bit wet. And then what I'm going to do is grab some crayons and I'm actually going to do an another process on top where I'm just kind of coloring in on some of the details and playing around with what how far I can push it. Um, it may not go on top of everything. These crayons are fantastic. I love them. They're like creamy, delicious crayons. Um, but on some colors, they're not going to show up as much. And that's okay because I really do like what I did with the paint. So this is just kind of like, it, it is the icing on the cake, which is a really nice part too. And I'm just playing around and I hope you enjoy playing around. And that's about it. I'm very happy with this. I hope you are happy with yours at home. I'm sure they are. And just remember, just keep drawing.